Hello everybody, hope you're doing well and thanks for joining us for another video. Now, the other day I received uh, an interesting email from somebody who goes by the name Cleric58. A name that I've actually been familiar with for a couple of years now because they are somebody who also debunks conspiracy theorists regarding the moon landings. And Cleric asked if I could help them debunk a recent article which had been published on the Owlis website by a Luis Bilbao. And the article that he's published is entitled Apollo 16 Major Photographic Inconsistency. Now, his claim centers around two photographs, both of which were taken during the Apollo 16 mission. Both are on Film Magazine 118. Photo numbers 18888 and 18889, so sequential photos. These are both photographs of the Earth during the coast phase of the mission as they were heading towards the Moon. Now, this kind of photo of Earth was nothing new. If you look through the image catalogues from Apollo, you'll find pretty much all of the missions took numerous photographs of the Earth at various stages of their coast phase. But if you happen to find a series of photographs where there is a reasonable amount of time passed between each shot, you can actually see the rotation of the Earth changing between the photos, which I think is pretty cool. And photos 888 and 889 from Apollo 16 are two such photos. If you resize them to match each other, you can see clear rotation of the Earth but you do have to resize the photos because the Earth appears much smaller in one of them. And there's two reasons that the size of the Earth in the photos would change. One is that the distance between the Earth and the camera changes by a significant amount, or two is that the focal length of the camera changes. And this is where Lewis claims there is an anomaly. Because whilst Apollo flights took various cameras and lenses with them, the stills photographs from the Apollo missions were typically done using a Hasselblad medium format camera, using a 60mm lens when they were outside on the lunar surface, or either an 80mm or 250mm lens when inside the spacecraft. So, Lewis did an analysis of the size of the Earth in these photographs to calculate at what distance the Earth would have been away for both the 80mm and 250mm lenses and found that if they were shot with the 80mm lens, then photo 888 was taken at a distance of 82,000 kilometers and 889 would have been at 116,500 kilometers. And if they were shot with the 250mm lens, then they would have been at 269 and 377,000 kilometers, respectively. So, Lewis comes to the conclusion that neither of the photos could have been taken with the 250mm lens, because the next photos after that would have put the astronauts way beyond the moon. Now, the Apollo photographs don't have timestamps printed on them to say exactly what time they were shot, so we don't know how much time has passed between each of these photos. But Lewis's maths for the 80mm lens shows that based on the change in the size of the Earth between the two shots, the camera's distance would have changed by some 34,500 kilometers which he says would have taken the spacecraft approximately four hours to do. So that would mean a four hour gap between photos 888 and 889 being taken. But he then analyzed the difference in the Earth's rotation between these photos and calculated there was an 8.6 degree shift between the two photos, which would equate to only about 35 minutes of time passed. His conclusion, Quote, on the one hand, it must be accepted that the difference in the size of Earth in AS-16-118-18888 and AS-16-118-18889 is due to a four-hour journey of 34,500 kilometers distance. While on the other hand, according to the rotation of the Earth, only 35 minutes have elapsed between these two photographs. 
Since these pr two premises cannot be simultaneously true, it implies that at least one photograph is false. But since they all belong to the same magazine, it leads to the inevitable conclusion that they must all be false, since it would be both absurd and impossible to intersperse false slash fake photos with real photographs." End quote. And funnily enough, just after I'd received this email from Cleric about this article, I had somebody commenting to me on YouTube quoting word for word the exact same conclusion from that article. So, time to debunk it. Cleric already had an idea as to where Lewis's analysis went wrong, which is that just because Apollo missions typically carried an 80 and a 250mm lens doesn't mean that that is all they carried. And in fact, if you look at the press release for Apollo 16, which was published to the press 10 days before the launch, it detailed everything they were aiming to achieve with the mission. And one of the sections talks about UV photography of the Earth and the Moon using a 105mm lens. And looking at the photography kit loadout for Apollo 16, sure enough, they had the 80 and 250mm lenses and a total of 20 regular film magazines for the Hasselblad camera stored in the command module at launch. But they also had one magazine of UV film for the camera as well as a 105mm Zeiss UV lens. Now, we're left with the unanswered possibility that one of those photos was taken with the 105mm lens. And could that explain this discrepancy in the size of Earth? Cleric suspected this to be the reason, but couldn't work out how to be sure, so asked if I would take a look. So, I took Lewis's analysis of the Earth rotation, that there is about 35 minutes between these two photos, and then set out to see if the Earth's size matched one shot being done with the 80mm lens and one shot being done with the 105mm lens. You're probably already a step ahead of me at this point, but we'll go through it anyway. Now, if this scenario is true, then likely the order is that photo 888 was shot with the 105mm and 889 was shot with the wider angled 80mm lens. Because if it was the other way around, that would mean they would have had to have traveled even further than 34 and a half thousand kilometers to make the Earth shrink with a longer focal length. So I started with double checking Lewis's conclusion that 889 taken with an 80 millimeter lens would have been 116,000 kilometers away. For this, I needed to work out what the actual angular size of the Earth is in the photo. So first, I looked up the angle of view that that 80mm lens produced, which according to Zeiss, who were the ones who made the lens, it has an angle of view of 38 degrees. Next, I needed to measure how many pixels the film negative was. Now for this, I was only interested in the actual area that was being exposed by the lens because I want to know how many pixels there are across that 38 degree angle of view. Now, the background of all these photos is black, which makes it somewhat impossible to see where the edges actually are. Thankfully, three photos later on the same magazine, photo 892, is just a wash of sunlight and glare. So that allows me to see very clearly where the edges of the exposed negative are. So I downloaded the full resolution scans of all these photos from the March to the Moon website, and I overlaid a faint version of the glare photo onto both 888 and 889. Then, measuring vertically along 889, because that's the orientation that the Earth is in this photo, I measured the negative area of the film to be 11,224 pixels from top to bottom. I then measured the Earth in the photo to be 1,720 pixels. So dividing 11,224 by 1,720 gives us a ratio of 6.5255, i.e. at the size that the Earth appears in this image, it would take about six and a half of them stacked one on top of the next to cover the length of the film negative. 
And we know that if this is the 80 millimeter lens that was used for this image, there would be a 38 degree angle of view between the top and the bottom of the photo. So dividing 38 degrees by our 6.5255 ratio means each earth in the stack would have about a 5.82 degree angular size. So we can now use an angular size calculator to work out approximately how far away the earth in this photo would be. Using Earth's diameter of 12,756 kilometers, a distance of 125,350 kilometers is required to get an angular size of 5.82 degrees. Next, I wanted to figure out the distance that they would have been 35 minutes prior to this. But it's a little bit tricky to work out because the Apollo crafts weren't cruising at a consistent speed. They were constantly slowing down. So, I looked through the radio transmissions for the Apollo 16 flight and found that at the 14 hour mark in the flight, the public affairs officer gave an update stating Apollo 16 was 123,000 kilometers from Earth, traveling at 2,130 meters per second. Apollo 16 at the present time is 66,450 nautical miles from Earth and uh, the spacecraft velocity is 6,990 feet per second. Which is 2.13 kilometers per second, which is equal to 127.8 kilometers per minute. Which that over 35 minutes would mean that they would have traveled almost four and a half thousand kilometers. So, if they were at 125,350 kilometers when photo 889 was taken, and photo 888 was taken 35 minutes prior, that would put photo 888 being taken at a distance of just under 121,000 kilometers. Going back to our angular size calculator, at that distance away from Earth, the angular size of the Earth would be approximately 6.04 degrees. So now we just need to work out what the angular size of the Earth in photo 888 is. So according to Zeiss's documentation for the 105 mm UV lens, it had an angle of view of 29 degrees. So I ran the same measurements on photo 888 that I'd done previously with 889. Measuring the full width of the film across the orientation of the Earth, I got 11,159 pixels, and I measured the Earth to be 2,352 pixels. Dividing those two gave a ratio of 4.744, and 29 degrees divided by the 4.744 ratio gives us an angular size of 6.11 degrees for the Earth which is only a half a degree off of what we calculated the Earth would be. I would call that well within margin of error, and it seems to make it pretty conclusive that these photos do fit being taken with two different lenses, and the numbers do match to them actually being traveling away from Earth. The daftest part about all of this, though, for me, is some of these people must be spending literally hours a day over multiple days, sifting through all these photos, looking for problems with them. There are close to 3,000 photos just from Apollo 16 alone. It will only take one photo having a problem with it for people to immediately write the whole thing off as fake. Yet you can wager that even after they see that the photos don't actually have the problem with them that they thought they did, they won't change their mind. Seems no amount of photos and videos without problems will convince most of these people that they're actually real. Anyway, I thought this was a fun little exercise. As always, feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video and you haven't already done so, then please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons, and hopefully we'll see you in the next video.